Before the earth was formed, you are God. We bow before your throne, oh God. We just want to give you praise tonight. We just want to give you praise. We cannot make it without you. And we cannot make it without your power. Jesus. If it wasn't of your love, and your faithfulness to the cross, where would we be? Today we are able to stand and testify that your death was life unto us. Your pain was healing unto our bodies. That your tears, O oh Lord, they were celebration of joy unto us. And we are able to experience your presence. For you are a great God. Yes, you are. You are the substance of all human virtues. You are all wise and you are all knowing, all understanding. You can do anything and everything we cannot do. You are everything good that we would like to be. You are omnipotent. You are all powerful. You are omniscient. You are all knowing. You are omnipresent. You are present everywhere. And we know that you are present even in this arena. Oh God, we know that you are in this place. And we want to give you praise. All we can say is, Abba, Father, thou art worthy to receive honor and glory. We bow before your throne. And we would like to give you praise. Everybody bow down and worship. Come on. Come to 
Greetings, welcome, 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 welcome to Prayer Life Ministries International. I'm Pastor Hall. My lovely wife, Prophet Hope Hall, is on, and we bring you greetings as we are prepared to do conversation with the pastors. We normally do it on Sunday evening at 6 p.m. on ES Eastern Standard Time. So we just want to welcome each and every one. I see new faces or new names. So welcome, welcome. We greet you. Um, before we get into the message today, um, and the message uh, has definitely hit me first and foremost. And um, when he had me um, dealing with me with this, um, it, it, it was it was challenging for me um, because this is something I was dealing with. But now, as of today, I think once I minister this message, I will be free. All right. The title, I'll just tell you the title before I get into, um, get into prayer is destroying the fear in your life. 
I said again, destroying the fear in your life. All right. Dear Gracious Heavenly Father, I just thank you right now. God, I, God, I just want your presence to reign upon us. I want your presence to rest upon us like never before, God, that your words speak out of me as I decrease, God, that anything that's in my heart that is of you that's come out, that is flow like living water, God, that it touching each and every individual that's on here today, God, God, that it flows, God, that it touch a heart, God, that it can correct or repair and then thrust forward, God, and it's going to realign to someone if they need realignment to your your glory to your plans that you have for their life god god we just thank you for all that you are doing for us god and we just say it being unto us the uh, the praise being unto us the the purpose that you have for us god the word of encouragement you have for us the information and the guidance that you have for us god we receive it now in the mighty precious name of jesus god we are open vessels god waiting for your pour to pour into us god we are in a partial heart partial or receiving god so we would love to receive your oil right now, your anointing, your glory right now that could rest upon us, God, that could change any situation that we may be dealing with, that could change any situation that we're going through right now, God, because we know we endure it and we're able to stand that we have victory on the other side. So, God, we ask you that each and every one of us that's here, that we cast our cares upon you, God, and you will sustain us, God. You will give us vision. You will give us victory. You will give us insight to be able to navigate through the issues, through the things, or even how to even be more prosperity than where we already is. We don't come to you all of the come to you only because we are in a bad place. We come to you with thanksgiving. We come to you with praise, God, because there is a lot more, God. As I'm reminded of the, the, the um, individuals with talent, the one had five, he went and produced five more, and he had one with three, and he produced three more. But you had that one that instead of producing anything, went and hit it, God. God, we don't want to hide our talent that you have given us, God. We want to be able to use our talents for your glory so it can multiply and it can bring purpose to your kingdom, God. So we just thank you and give you all the glory and praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Welcome, welcome. Uh, destroying the fear in your life. And I'm going to start off with a straight out um, testimony. What happened? Actually, it happened almost 20 years ago. Dealing with the um, key scripture that I will be coming from is Psalms 21, 27, verse 1. You know, it's a very familiar um, scripture. You know, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is my strength and my life. Or whom shall I be afraid? Um, that's the KGJV version. Um, and what I want to talk about is concerning fear. I remember back in 2002, right? And um, I was at a pastor appreciation service. Um, I had just came back from Missouri and landed in Alabama, um, and the service on high, I remember the minister, uh, the, or the MC or no, the minister that was leading the service, he, he made a beckon call. He felt that God was tugging on people in the audience that, or the people that was in the church that was in the building that, that he was calling them to ministry. And I had a burning sensation on me. I mean, I felt the fire of God on me like never before. But I didn't answer the call. And then at, even in the process, when he, he mentioned it a couple of times, I, um, I heard this scripture, Psalms 27 and 1. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Who shall I fear? But I didn't beckon the call. So the service completed and I didn't answer the call because of fear. The fear rests upon me so much because I started to think about all the other things that I had. I would think about, wow, you don't speak well enough at this time. You have a speech impediment. Um, you may not be clear. Um, you know, you're introvert. You don't like talking in front of people. Um, different things that always that flashed before me are the reason why I didn't take the call at that time. And the reason why I mentioned this test, which of this story is because it took almost 20 years because it's 2022 now to realize that fear stagnated my purpose and plan what God had for my life. 
because I didn't answer the call when it was was begging to me in the first place. I'm not saying because I can get, gain anything back because I'm starting to be, you know, in order. I'm starting to be obedient. So God can work that out. You know, he can restore, you know, everything back to me. But I took 20 years because even into, I will say today, with fear to get up here and speak, I had issues with this that allow fear to hold me back and delay my comment on speaking on in front of people. And what this message really today is really telling you that I am making a stand, me personally saying, destroying the fear ants in my life. The fear has helped, fear has helped me back for so long. Fear has helped me back to where I was scared to make progress because I talk all about the negative part of what will happen if I complete this task, instead of the positive, instead of the prosperity, um, instead of the, the new life that came with me making that step. So as I read, I read Psalms 27 and 1 again, the King James Version, it reads, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Let's talk about fear. Fear, the definition of fear that I got from the Westbury is saying an unpleasant emotion caused by a belief that someone or something is dangerous, likely to cause pain or threat. I read that again. An unpleasant emotion caused by the belief that someone or something is dangerous, likely to cause pain or threat. As I was doing and going through the process, you know, reading, devotion, and studying, one of the thoughts that came to me that we have to be mindful of what fear is, is whatever you fear, you bring reverence to it. I'm gonna say that again, and I'll clean it up after a while. Whatever you fear, you bring reverence to it. What is reverence? Let's, let's talk about reverence, respect. So a lot of times there's a certain type of fear. There's a fear of the Lord, you bring in respect, um, admiration to the Lord, you're exalting Lord that who he is, he's the mighty one, he's the way maker, he's a miracle worker. But when we have fear associated with things in our life, we actually respecting that over the fear of the Lord. Because right now, if we look at the church, you look and it's, there's a lot of fear that has went away of people fearing God because the way how the church ministries has been operating in the past and operating right now, the fear of God has gone in a lot of establishment and it's been, and it's, and God is not pleased. So what I'm saying is whatever you have fear of, which I'll have fear, my fear was coming in front of people. So I was given that that respect when God was telling me to come forth and speak to the people, I was allowing my issues of shyness, my speaking speech impediment, my not um, pronouncing clear words. I let that held me back from going forth. So I respected that more than I respected God. Reverence is a deep respect for some someone or something. So I was respecting my speech impediment over that God that who can clear it up and instantly. And right now, if you hear me talk, I don't have that because God is with me. God has been working on me, working through me that once was I had, I don't have no more because the power of God is resting upon me. So instead of taking that leap in, in faith and going forth, I was staying stagnated in the process because I let that be my reverence. I reverence my the slur speech. I reverence my chopping up syllables and words. I let that be my king, my Lord, and not being having to feel the God in the process. Proverbs 29 and 5. This is a very good scripture, and I'm reading the passage translation because it said, fear and intimidation is a trap that holds you back. That's plain and simple right there. Fear and intimidation is a trap that holds you back. When you fear something, you're very cautious. Sometimes you overcautious. And where when you fear something, you are more focused on the, what you're fearing and then what you're hearing from God. I say that again. When you are focused on something that you fear, 
and you'll fit you'll focus on that because that'll be more of your focus than you'll focus on God. So you won't hear God giving you insight, giving you um, instructions that even though that what you fear is a lot in front of you, there is something better if you just endure. Amen. One of the things that remind me of that relate to this, you know, uh, if you ever read the book, Who Moved My Cheese? Amen. The story talks about a mouse that was looking for his cheese, couldn't find his cheese, right? So he kept digging, 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 and they stopped in the process where the cheese was nearby, but because it gave up, it just stopped. So what I'm saying is when you have fear imitation, it's a trap, it holds you back. If the, the mouse would have kept going, it would have found his found his cheese, but it stopped. So what I'm trying to say in the process and in your life, you don't stop. If God is giving you insight, giving you direction and instructions in your life, no matter what it is, go forth and understand and hear from the Lord and don't allow the fear of the unknown. Don't allow the fear of what you think may happen. Don't make, don't allow the fear of the past relationship. Don't allow the fear of things that happened in the past according to relationship that it, that you don't feel that if you go through the process, it ain't going to work. You know, that don't allow that fear to stop you from going forward. Amen. Amen. The more you fear you have in your life of other things equate, equate to the measurement of trust you have in God and his word. The more you feel you have in your life of other things equate to the measurement of trust you have in God and his word. So basically, if you're fearing, fearing the thing you have, your trust is low in God. Because that means you're saying what you fear over, override and supersede what God has for you. Amen. Because Proverbs 3 and 5, it says, trust in the Lord complete. Now, reading the passage translation it turned out to be one of my favorite ones, how it breaks it down. Trust in the Lord completely and do not rely on your own opinions wow that's good trust when anything you're doing in life trust in the lord completely let the lord be that lamp that that guide to guide you from a to b and not your own opinion because sometimes we can get so confident that we become complacent with god and then we start thinking our ideals is what God is saying and God is saying no. And then we block out his because we want to do this. A lot of times we don't want to take the, the uh, long way. We want to take the easy and shortcut way. You know, we love the microwave thing instead of letting the oven cook it these days. So we, we don't want to go through the process. We want to get here. And then, oh, you know, for instance, this a lot goes with people with ministry and titles because once someone prophesied, hey, this is your title, everybody want to become that title the next day, but they got to be careful. There's a process with that title. There's a work with that title. <laughs> There's some, <laughs> better count up the cost with that title, you know, because you're just not going to get it. There's work involved in that. You know, we were bought with a price. The Lord died on the cross for us. We're going to suffer in his name. So we have to be mindful of the title aspect. Don't be so easy and hungry for titles because there's some work and there's a process and there's demonic entities that are assigned to that title that are coming. And you're not ready. They're going to tear you up. Amen. When you get to when you're trusting the Lord completely, you got to get to the point in your mindset where you're just saying, you're standing at a cliff and you have a decision that you have to make in your life, right? You have a decision. There's a decision in your life. You're like, I got to make it. And you're at this cliff and you know, all the way you can to make it, you have to leap. You got to get in your mindset that, you know, you don't see nothing right now. You know that if you leap, you got to believe and trust God. He's going to catch you. He's going to have a landing spot for you. Even if you, you start falling a little bit down on the cliff, that it's not nothing that's level, but there is a resting place. There is a hiding place for you when you leap. 
That's how you have to trust God in this situation, in this hour, where no matter what it is, your finances, your way of life, your job, your relationship, sometimes you just got to leap and trust God that he's going to take care of you. Trust God that he has, he is going to provide for you. Trust God that he is going to make provision for you because he told you to do it. That's the key. You're jumping because he told you to leap not because you want to leave. You're at this um, process in your life. You're at this crossroad. You don't know what to do. And the Lord said, go forward. But you see all the troubles. You see no, no path ahead. No, you got to allow God to be God. And you have to trust him in this season. You have to trust him in this hour. You have to make sure you trust him because when you leap, he's going to catch you because you trusted him enough to leap, even though you didn't see what was on the other side. Amen. And another thing about fear that, you know, going back to fear, because that's, you know, Psalms 23 and 4. And everybody knows Psalms, the 23rd, Lord, 23rd Psalm, the Lord is my shepherd, right? But verse 4 it talks about a great, great thing. It said in the Passion Translation, it said, even when your path takes me through the valley of the deepest darkness, fear will never conquer me. Even in the deepest darkness, even when my life feel like I'm surrounded in darkness, that I don't even feel God, right? I can't allow the fear to conquer me. I can't fall prey to my fear because I'm in a dark place. I am surrounded by darkness. But the light within me, the greatest he that's in me that is in the world is going to help me get out of this. But I have to trust him. And I can't allow the fear to succumb at me. I can't allow the fear to overtake me. I have, because the fear will lead you to doubt in God. Your fear will allow you to doubt God that while I won't post to be in this position, a lot of time we have to go through darkness to get into the get to the other side into the light where God wants us to go. You know, because a lot of times one of the things uh, is I remember one of the sermons I did, I think it was one of my first official back in 2012, 13, where it says my back was against my sermon was my back is against the wall, but I'm in the right place. Because during that process, my back was getting the wall. I learned to depend on God and not myself because I know I was trapped. I was surrounded. And the only way I could get out of my situation and get out my circumstance, I had to trust God, totally rely on God. So when you're going through a dark place in your life, it's not always to punish you. Sometimes it's always to build your trust and your confidence in God to keep you going forward. So when you get out of it, you'll be a lot stronger in your situation. So when you're running into it, the next season, you can may have victory. You will be stronger because you just went through that season, going through that darkness, and where you are learning to depend on God totally. You're relying on God totally, and you're not, and you're losing yourself. You're decreasing yourself in the process while you're there. So that's that's one of the things. So don't get uh, messed because you're in a dark place, you know, because it said fear will never conquer me, for you already have, you know. And then he said, your authority is my strength and my peace. The comfort of your love takes away my fear. God loves takes away my fear because he loves us so much. And through his grace and through all the issues and the troubles and the things I did, he still loved me right now to be in this position. His grace is sufficient enough, even in my weakness. And even when I failed him many times, his love was still here for me. So I'm just thinking grateful for God to be in this position right now because his love covered me and sustained me when I wasn't even deserving to be in this place. But his grace, we all love the grace that he has. We are no even worthy enough, but his grace gives us opportunity to worship him, give us opportunity to pursue him like never before. Give us an opportunity to just give him the glory, just to worship him, to exaltate him in everything we do, because we are worthy. You know, we're just showing admiration for him because of our life that style that we once had. It's not where it's at anymore. Shit, kid, I so cool. Yes, God. Hallelujah. And then one of the things when you're in that dark place, and I was talking about it, and I'm going back to my notes, is we have the confidence that we are falling 
God's voice through the unction of the Holy Spirit, the less we fear, the more confidence is present. Basically, what I'm saying is when we follow in God and hear, hear have the confidence that we're hearing God's voice, even in our dark place, by the unction of the Holy Spirit that's connected to God, the less we fear and the more confidence we have in God's voice as we go through it. Another scripture, and this is talking about the fear of God, how it correlates, right? Psalms 111, 10th verse, and it talks about the Passion Translation. And it said, where can wisdom be found? It is born in the fear of God. Everyone who follows his ways would never lack his living understanding and the ad adoration of God would abide throughout eternity. So if you want wisdom in your life, it is born in the fear of the Lord. So we already talked about what fear means in reference to God, you know, admiration, respect, honor. And then, Psalm, then Proverbs 3 and 7, farther down on the, the Passion Translation, it said, don't think for a moment that you know it all. For wisdom come when you adore him with undivided devotion and avoid everything that's wrong. I read that again. Don't think for a moment that you know it all. For wisdom come when you adore him, when you adore God. Okay, what adore? Love, worship, esteem, respect, and your undivided devotion. You know, we have a lot of devotionals that is, that is, you know, that are out that I made a commitment to read. You know, devotion is like, you know, I have a couple of devotions that I read now that I read on a daily basis that are just phenomenal, that has helped me to keep me grounded and, and help me build a foundation towards God. It helps me keep me foundationally rooted in God for this purpose and plan to understand, you know, that I can trust God more. And then the fears that I have of life of this world are decreasing because I'm trusting God more. Amen. Amen. All right. I'm actually coming to a close soon. I got this. Um, then we'll be able to, uh, you know, expound, definitely give everybody opportunity to speak. You know, I see, uh, I think that's uh, Minister Shaw. Welcome, man of God. Um, thank you for uh, tuning in. I think some people are having technical problems because I see them jumping in and out. So I, I just thank each and every one that's here. And the Lord gave me this. This is something that he had me to deal with. Exodus 14. We all had a Red Sea moment, right? Everybody, if you know the story, you know, I know a lot of people, Bible scholars on here, I know they know the story about, you know, how the people of Israel, they finally got free and they headed to the Red Sea. They was trapped. God provided for them. They went through and, and then they went to the other side and God swallowed up the enemies. But I'm going to break it down a little bit. I have a couple of scriptures that I have um, broken down before us because we, and just think about God had ministered to me to, talk about a Red Sea moment. You know, Red Sea moment is when you're almost what I was similarly talking about when you had came to this place where you can't go forward. You don't see a way. Let's put it this way. You don't see a way of going forward because something, an obstacle is in front of you, but you have to trust God that he will revile a way at doing his timing because you know the pressure of the enemy is closing. You know, a decision got to be made fast in this Red Sea moment. And so you're feeling the pressure of the enemy or the decision, maybe it's time. Like if I don't make the decision about this, the um, opportunity for me getting a new house closed. You know, if I don't make the decision by right here, then, you know, my relationship may be in a, in a bad place. If I don't make a decision, you know, um, about my job, my job may pass me over for another um, promotion. You know, and things is like a Red Sea moment. So just think about, in your life or having a red sea moment where you're in a position where you don't see a way through you have to stop because you can't go forward and you have pressure coming up because it's like it's getting closer and closer as time 
And only way you can get through is through the miracle, miraculous work of the father, right? But one of the things that caught me was Exodus 4, Exodus 14, chapter 4, verse. And it said, and it's talking about how God was telling, he said, once again, I will harden Pharaoh's heart and he will chase after you. I have planned this in order to display my glory through Pharaoh and his whole army. Your Red Sea moment is for you to see God's hand perform over your life and for God to get the glory. I'm going to read that again. Your Red Sea moment is for you to see God's hand performed over your life and, and, and for God to get the glory. So when you ran into your Red Sea moment, it's just to let you know that God is with you. God is going to get the glory out of your Red Sea moment. Let me move a little bit farther. In Exodus 13 and 14, it says, and once again, I heard in Pharaoh's heart and he will chase after you. And I planned this in order to display, wait a minute, I think I went, I copied too many. Hold up, let me pull up the scripture. Sorry about that. I'm reading the first verse four again. Ah, I was getting excited. Give me one second. Oh, Lord. That is, is it yeah, 14, 13. Okay, there we go. Now, let me clear that up. We're back in the game. All right. It said, but Moses told 13 and 14, sorry about that, Exodus 14, uh, verse 13 and 14 says, but Moses told the people, don't be afraid. You know, don't let fear overcome you. Just stand still and watch the Lord rescue you today. The Egyptians you see today will never be seen again. The Lord himself will fight for you. Just stay calm. So when doing your Red Sea moment where fear is coming upon you, do not panic in your Red Sea moment. Don't allow fear to make you become disobedient to God. Just stand still and allow God to move and rescue you today. When you're in your Red Sea moment, listen to the instructions of the Lord. Sometimes they are tough because what you want and what you want to happen and how you want to happen doesn't mean it's always worked that way. You have to be patient and listen to the word of God in that moment. And I know the pressure coming down. You know, I see the enemies that's coming. I see the people that's trying to take me away, trying to get me set up and lose my job. I see the people that's trying to mess up my marriage, you know, and I see people, um, Sis, don't send me a message while I'm ministering, please. <laughs> um, so, <laughs> wow. She wanted to know if that was an amplified version. Keep going. I know. Keep going. But she could have hit you up on that, and I could have gave it after that. <laughs> no worry. Keep going. Amen. Exodus 14 and 16. And it's New Living Translation. Pick up your staff and raise your hand over the sea. Divide the water so the Israelites can walk through the middle of the sea on dry ground. Basically, follow the instructions of the Lord when you're in your deep, your Red Sea moment. Follow instructions intently. So you got to get into a place where you know, if you know uh, Elijah, if you know the story of Elijah, when he had, you know, he was on Mount Carmel, he did this thing, he killed, they killed what, by 800 something prophets, you know, he brought like loud God to bring the fire down, burn up the offering and stuff, but yet he became depressed and he ran away because he, Jezebel said she was going to kill him. He gained depressed, he told God, hey, kill me, you know, and then God had to remind him, you ain't, look, I got over 7,000 prophets having bowed to Baal, um, Elijah. And then he went into the, the cave and then, you know, there was the, the, the wind, there was the fire, there was different things that show up, but then there was a small, still voice, a God. And that's when Elijah knew, hey, that's his voice. I'm, I want to, I know that's him talking. So what I'm saying is you got to begin in that place where you're secluded enough, where you can understand the voice of the Lord during your, at all seasons, but especially during your Red Sea moment, because 
you got to make sure you're hearing God because these instructions are critical to get you to your get you to the next side. Your, these instructions are critical because a lot of times the the um, the work that we have to do is strictly strictly on faith. The work we have to do is strictly on faith. So like uh, Moses, he had to raise up his hand, his his rod in his hand for the water to depart, and it was strictly on faith. He's like, okay, God told him to do it, and he did it. It was God. It wasn't him. He was just going on, being obedient to God because he heard the voice of the Lord and he did it, right? And then you have to believe in the instructions. And that was the key. Moses believed in the instructions of the Lord before the manifestation could happen. Threw his hands out, and as he did that, the water part. Many of us, we can walk right now. That ain't going to happen. But Moses had to do that by faith. Saying, Lord, you told me to do it. I'm going to do it. I'm going to hold on to your promise, your words. Exodus 14, 18 to 20, 21st verse, New Living Translation. When my glory is displayed through them all, through them, all Egypt will see my glory and know that I am the Lord. Then the angel of God, who had been leading the people of Israel, moved to the rear of the camp. The pillar of cloud also moved from the front and stood behind them. The cloud settled between the Egyptian and the Israelite camp. As darkness fell, the cloud turned to fire, lighting up the night. But the Egyptians and the Israelites did not approach each other all night. Then Moses raised his hand over the sea. And the Lord opened up a path through the water with a strong east wind. The wind blew all the night, turning the seabed into dry land. Whoo, that's a lot of the impact, um, unpack right there. Even in the midst of the attack, if you read the story, even in the midst of the attack or the being pursued by the Egyptians, God positioned himself to protect his people like a wraparound shield. And I got the wraparound shield process through, if you read the Passion Translation, it talks about Psalms 144 and verse two. And it got different variations where he's talking about the wraparound. And he said, he's my shelter of love and my fortress of faith who wraps around himself around me as a secure shield. I hide myself in this one who seduces enemies before me. He's my shelter of love and my fortress of faith who wraps himself around me as a secure, as a secure shield. So during this process, he was just wrapping his, uh, when he came back to protect the people uh, from the enemy as they was approaching, he says that the cloud went behind them and the light went behind them and they kept a separation, like a, a boundary between the Egyptians and the people of God, right? Exodus 14, 27, it says, New Living Translation. So as sun began to rise, Moses raised his hand over the sea and the water rushed back into its usual place. The Egyptians tried to escape, but the Lord swept them into the sea. As God illuminated and opened his servant eyes, you will be able to see God destroy your enemies right in front of you. So basically what Moses saw, because he went through the process, went through the Red Sea, and you see all the water, you know, wasn't there. But you can imagine that was some little, little scary moments because you see this water just up and you're able to walk through this dry land. But what it was saying was God opened his eyes and once they made it to their, made it to their purpose was to make it to the other side. God was able to, they was able to see their enemies be destroyed right in front of them for being obedient. So don't let your fear stop you from enduring and, and having complete victory through your Red Sea moment. That was the nugget through it out. Don't let fear stop you from enduring and having a complete victory through your Red Sea moment. Amen. At this time, babe, it's you. You're up. <laughs> Hallelujah. I feel like you beat me a little while ago. <laughs> oh, my bad. My Hallelujah. So um, God is so good. Um, 
gracious and miracle evening to you guys. Um, destroying the fear in your life. God was showing me God fear and man fear. And they're sort of acronyms, but almost like sentences where God was showing me prophetically. And God's fear, uh, F-E-A-R, facing endless supernatural aptitudes and obedient realms through righteousness. Hallelujah. Facing endless supernatural aptitudes, endless gifts, endless favor, in obedience, in obedient realms through righteousness. And righteousness is Jesus Christ. And so that is our fear for the Lord. Now, man fear falling back from endless opportunities and block you from reaching heaven. Mm. Say it again. Falling back from endless opportunities and block you from reaching heaven. And so we see the difference here between God's fear and man's fear. People always say fear, don't be afraid, don't fear, don't fear. And sometimes they forget to add that there's another fear, which is the fear of the reverence of God, which is, is uh, knowing that he is so powerful, he can do more for you than your temporary success that you can do for yourself. And then it, uh, it, it brought me to Esther's fear versus her fear of God. When they told, when, when the message was brought to Esther, she automatically had a human fear. Like, where would that do, what would that do to me? Because they made the rule that she cannot go forth the king without his uh, requesting her. But then the other fear was, I love God. And so I have more fear of God and, and freeing my people than I do of myself being in this kingdom. Because being in this kingdom is not worth it. Because eventually I'll, the, 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 think about it, her being a queen can fade away. It means nothing. It's just a human crown. It's a worldly crown. And, it, and, it, and then, it, but it bounds her people even more. And they hated her people, Haman did. So he, she took the fear of God, knowing the rule. She wanted to be dressed. How many of us want to be dressed first before we go before the king? We want to be dressed. When God said, just come as you are, Esther had to come as she, as she was. Because he, because uh, I forgot what his name was. He, Haggai, Haggai, uh, he did not call for the, the, her servants to dress her. So she said, okay, then fine. We just going to do this. I promise you, God saw her. And she went before the king, even in knowing that she could be beheaded, that she could be killed instantly. She went before him in fear and reverence of God, and God saved her life and the life of her people. And Haman got found out. And what he set up for Mordecai, he died for it. He died on the same thing. So fear of God is the manifestations of just doing it, just going before him. And so she had to sat there in her crown and her jewels and those crown and jewels all fade away when God comes back. Esther has to answer to God too, no matter how many years ago it was. She still had to answer to <coughs> having God first, fearing God first before fearing the, the people and fearing the losing her crown. The least of her worries was losing her crown and her life compared to watch this losing her life for God so how many of us take our fear of what we have and we want to get dressed before we go before God when he said I need you to come as you are you know why he says that because when he come you come as you are even in the world he'll come and change your heart because you desire him because you fear him as a matter of fact, he don't care about those clothes. He wants to give you new clothes. He wants to give you a new mantle, right? Glory to God. And, he, and, and the man, a man of God talked about the title. I know being a prophet, I had to go through some things to get to where I am. It is a process. I don't care if you think a prophet, oh, uh, 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 you want to be a pastor, if you want to be an evangelist, you want to be that, there's still some suffering that has to go forth. If you think about it, Jesus carried multiple titles. 
So he suffered multiple things. He suffered multiple people doubting him. He suffered multiple people saying that he was a demon because he cast out demons. He had to suffer being called a demon. He had to suffer being hungry while this demon came to him and told him to make bread out of rocks when he knew he could. He had to suffer multiple stripes on his back for us, for the titles that he carried. King of Kings, Lord of Lords, Jehovah Jireh. Alpha and Omega, he had to carry those. Jesus of Nazareth, he had to suffer those things. He had to be suffered, transferring, being a baby and then moving from town to town just to keep him alive because that's not the prophecy for Herod to take his life. We have to fear God. Jesus feared his father. Therefore, the prophecy went forth. Was it painful for him? Yes, but when he rose three days, it was prosperous for him. Come on. And not only was it prosperous for him because he feared his own father. It, when he was in the garden, he said, Father, pass this cup for me. We back it up a little bit. But yet he feared father. He feared daddy. He said, okay, dad, but wait a minute. If it's your will and not my will be done. Come on. That was the fear. I guarantee you, there's nothing new under the sun. So I guarantee you, Jesus feared man. He feared man coming after him. But then he said, wait a minute. I can't fear man. I got to fear my father. That's why everything that we have going on in our lives, Jesus already knows about it. And we have to go through when we want to get to something. We Even if it's not a title, just to love him, just to live with him. We've got to suffer for Christ. Hallelujah. And he will make your crooked path straight. He showed me Isaiah 45, 1 to 3 in the Passion Translation. God shepherd Cyrus. This is what Yahweh says to his anointed one. Mm. Cyrus, whose right hand I have grasped as my servant. And watch this, make it personal. Des Dexter, Elizabeth, James, Diane, Jacqueline. Tanisha and Jackie, whose right hand I have grasped hope, whose right hand I have grasped as my servant to conquer nations and dethrone their kings. God has given us, he said he already have given us, we are his anointed ones. So we've got to know, not walk in the fear of man. Like the man of God said, Pastor said, we've got to walk in the fear of God or we won't, we won't have what we desire. We won't have what God has desired for us is bigger than what we desire for ourselves. For I will open doors before him and no fortified gate will remain closed. Come on, Jesus. And verse two, I will march out in front of you and level every obstacle. What? Level every obstacle? This is the promise of God to Cyrus, but this is the promise of God to you. I prophesy that to you tonight, that you will remember this scripture and knowing that God will do that for you, that no fortified gate will be closed on your behalf, that he will open up the doors before you. And, and he said, I will march out in front of you and level every obstacle. I will shatter to pieces bronze doors and slice through iron bars. Oh my God. How many of us can slice through iron bars? I don't care what tools they give you. You know how long it'll take you when God can snap his finger and do it for you if you believe in him? And verse three, I will give you hidden treasures from dark, concealed places and wealth waiting secret sites. In secret sites, y'all see that? Wealth waiting in secret sites. So you got to trust him to know that he already has your wealth in his hand. You got to fear him. You cannot fear man or you won't receive this stuff so that you recognize me for it is Yahweh. Glory. The God of Israel who calls you by name. He knows your name. God knows your name. Watch this. Question is, do you know his name? 
knowing his name and walking in his name are two different things. Though you may know him, though they will call Lord, Lord, all will not enter into the kingdom of heaven. So you can call on Jesus. You can sit in church four and five hours and worship. You can go to revivals three to four week, days a week and every week that wherever they have in every city, you can follow, follow the most anointed prophet. You can get prophecies from here to the hill. But do you know who Jesus is? Do you fear him? We are going to destroy the fear in our life by fearing God. We're going to destroy the fear of man. And God said, sometimes when you got a plan and you look further out, you see destruction. But God said, what do you see? I see a boiling point pot from the north. He said, yeah, because you get ready to take over the enemy. What else do you see? I see an almond branch. Yeah, because I keep watch over you just like I promised. So whatever you see, you've got to trust God. The uh, almond branch was nearer to him than the, uh, the war. But guess what? He already won it. You got to see that you've already won it in Jesus' name. When the people of Israel were fearful of the sea, what, Moses, you brought us through the desert to be caught between the sea and between Pharaoh who's trying to kill us? What kind of God are we serving here? But you got to have faith. And Moses had to have the same faith to see that lay that rod across that sea that you were crossing across the land. And watch this dry land. You, they didn't have to go through muddy land. They didn't have to fall on muddy stuff. They didn't have to get eaten by the creatures of the sea. They were able to walk through it. And they said, okay, now we're here on this rock. Now what? He's still coming. Oh, God. Pharaoh was drowned by the Red Sea. So your Pharaoh, what is your Pharaoh? Who is your Pharaoh? Even though he's coming after you, know that the fire of God in your fear for the Lord, the reverence of who God is, is going to make your pathway straight. He is going to take care for you. He's going to lay it out for you. You just have to have faith and believe the size of a mustard seed. You cannot fear man because fearing man falling back from endless opportunities and block you from reaching heaven. Oh, God. So this is good today. I prophesy that every fear that you have to move forward in a project, in a career move, in whatever it is, a new home, a new car, whatever it is that you won't have fear. Let me help you out. But not only that you don't have fear, don't just move forward, but move forward in wisdom. Yes, Lord. People do not put wisdom and that fear together. They just say, okay, well, Lord said don't have no fear. I'm getting ready to do it. And you get out there and you drown. Peter. Wisdom, Peter gets out the boat. Wisdom says, if I'm looking at my daddy and I'm standing on the water, let me keep looking at him so I can reach him. Not fear the things around me so that I don't drown, but, but fear of the Lord, the reverence for who God is. He's standing out there in water. He tell me to come. He's not going to kill me. Mm. Today I prophesy over your life that you shall live and not die. God is a great God. He is a powerful God. And he will give you God fear facing endless supernatural aptitudes in obedient realms through righteousness. So endless opportunities are yours, but you have to trust God. You have to know that he's going to, he's going to give you a, a, a Isaiah 45, one through three blessing. My God, from the, I feel God for the glory. Because some of you have been holding yourselves back because you've been fear of just going out there and doing it. And God said, you go out there and you begin to do it. But when you do it, you do it by fearing me and by wisdom. My famous thing, GPS system, God's positioning strategy system. God positioned me, position me in the strategy that you have me to, to move in. And he'll give you strategic moves. Why? Because he already has sent an angel out on your behalf to do what you need to do. Mm. 
Hallelujah. Because glory about Shikanda Raba. So fear today, fear of man, fear of man's faces, fear of man's eyes, fear of man's voice, fear of the world. I'll be broken off of you right now. Some of you are getting broken off out of that fearing place. Some of you, hallelujah, don't be fearful to love again. Don't be fearful to, um, to embrace what God has embraced in you. Don't be fearful in Jesus' name. If you know what things is to be so, then you put it down on paper, lay it before the Lord, believe and trust that he will give you endless opportunities beyond your vision. He said, write the vision down and make it plain. So you got to make it plain, Lord, this is what I desire. And I'm trusting you. You are my, you are my head almond tree because you watch over me. So today, today is the last day that you will fear in Jesus' name. We are destroying the fear in your life right now. You've got to believe it. It don't just take a prophetess. It doesn't take an apostle. It takes you. You have to be uh, able. You have the ability to say, God, here I am. This is what I desire. Lord, take me there. Do the strategy in Jesus' name. It don't take long. He said, although it may tarry, when I come, it's going to be right on time. When I come, it's going to be worth your wait. So you got to wait on God. Wait don't mean just sit there and don't do nothing. Wait on God is to do it while waiting. So you can, Lord, is this a step? If he says, hold on a second, let him take care of your enemies. And then he'll say, okay, now let's go in Jesus' name. I think about Jehoshaphat when he was one man surrounded by all these people getting ready to kill him. And in the midst of him, I can just see him in the middle, curled up like a baby and said, Lord, here I am. Please destroy my enemies. And he rises up and the enemies are instantly destroyed. Read it. It's in the Bible. Jehoshaphat. My God, glory to God. Hallelujah. He called on the name of the Lord and the Lord came and rescued him from all of his enemies. That is in the Bible. He will rescue you from your enemies. That's in Psalms, wisdom, in Proverbs. Get your wisdom book and begin to read and say, Lord, I want wisdom because wisdom is like finding a good wife. For God is well pleased. Oh God, not your wisdom. But his wisdom will destroy the fear in your life. Didn't think I was coming back to that, did you? Your wisdom will kill it. But his wisdom will make it grow. His wisdom will give you a garden of mustard seed trees. Mm, you all have to give one in his garden. His, he'll take that and he'll get that increase going. Hallelujah. You watering that seed of faith is just trusting him and he will give the increase and you will have an orchard of mustard sheet trees and you didn't plant them. In this supernatural activity, glory to God, will destroy the fear in your life if you just trust God. Hallelujah. So I pray that this right here has encouraged somebody today. No longer walk in the fear of things of God. Move forward. Move forward in wisdom. Move forward. Don't just be practical. Be Jesus practical. Jesus, what do I do? Is this for me? Should I go here? Should I not? I'm leaning on you, Lord, and I'm not fearful at all. And every rejection is not a rejection if you're trusting the Lord. That means that he doesn't want you to go through that door yet. <laughs> he don't want you to go through that door yet. He said, wait a minute, because I got a door for you that I want to be open. I want to lock that one right now because you don't need that door right there. So every rejection is not, it's only to build you, only to edify you. So do not fear. Fear is, is, is birthed from rejection as well. Rejection and fear, they walk hand in hand. Just because you got rejected, you're fearful to go back there again. Because you got rejected in a marriage, you're fearful for going back there again. You got rejected in, in love, you're fearful from going back there again. And a perfect love casts out what? All fear.
in Jesus' name. Hallelujah, glory to Gashakan de Rebusa. So we are we going name by name, sir? Okay, glory to God. Hallelujah. Okay, uh, James Shaw. God, your name Shaw, I see show. God said, let me show you the way. Stay out of your way. Get in his way. He already has the plans for you. He's already set it up for you. Everything is going to be all right. Though the struggles may come, though it's feeling terrible sometimes. Sometimes you feel like you're not doing how you need to be doing. But God said you're doing fine. You're doing fine, son. I know you can do better. I need you to give me that worship. I need you to let me show you my faith even bigger and greater because I have bigger and better and greater things. In Jesus' name, Rabba Sakataya. Don't run from the things that hurt you. The things that hurt you before in the past, God has already wiped them clean. It's time for a new walk. It's time for a new talk. It's time for a new love. It's time for a new precious beginning. It's time, it's time, it's time. Stop wasting time, I hear the Lord saying. Stop wasting time. Just trust me and go for it because what this beautiful butterfly has for you is gonna make you two beautiful butterflies. Glory to God. In Christ, in Jesus' name, I see you coming up out of the ground. Hallelujah. Like God is watering you. Like he's giving you increase. I see you coming up out of the ground and you're reaching your hands out. And there is a soft hand that you're reaching for. You are pulling this soft hand out of miry clay. We know that God moves and that's how he does. He pulls us out of miry clay. And I see you moving this soft hand. Time is too short and too precious for you not to feel the complete love that God wants. There is a blanket of love being wrapped around you even now. A man of God, he wants to show you to show you the way he said don't be a double-minded man and unstable in all his ways that ain't always evil that just means sometimes we take the reins sometimes we have our own goals when God said I got a goal for you I have a princess for you I have a queen for you I have other things I want to do for you I want to increase in you in Jesus name but I see Oh, glory to God. Your work is not in vain. What you've done is not in vain. God said, whatever it was that really pierced you in your side, he said, it's over in Jesus' name. I know the, a man of God wanted the thorn to be removed. And God said, no, I'm reminding you that I am God. But God said, I'm removing that thorn from you, man of God, today. Just trust me. Don't worry. Don't worry about bleeding out. He said, move quickly. You already know who that is. He said, move quickly. Stop wasting time because time is of the essence. You two need to grow together in Jesus' name. Because he is growing you up. He's growing you up. He says, I'm watching over you. Just trust me and don't let fear of the world, of fear of your past intervene with what I have for you in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. We're going to start, hallelujah. We'll start with you. So what, what I do, go ahead and um, what I do is call out your names. If you learn something, you want to say something? If I call out your names and you just tell me, uh, you tell us what, what God is saying to you from the word or you know, you enjoyed it, whether you have questions, whether you have comments, uh, this is the time to do to do it when I call out your name. If you don't, that's fine. Just say I don't and 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 keep it moving in Jesus' name. Did you want to say something, Pastor? First, yeah. first give a to God. It was, it was a pleasure for me to be here this evening. And I needed that word because there's some things that have been on my mind today, and some things were just spoken to me just today. And I'm like, okay, God, what are you, what are you trying to do here? And I guess you just confirmed some things. And so 
is because God did not give us a spirit of fear. A lot of times we fear things that we don't really understand. Mm. But if we go, if we ask God for wisdom, he'll give us that wisdom and we'll begin to understand it. It's just like in the ministry, I mean, when I first entered the ministry, I was talking to a pastor and he asked me about pastoring. And I said, well, I, you know, I really don't know how to pastor. He said, really pastoring is, it's on the job training. For, it is. It's about going in. If you're called by God, he will show you and tell you what to do. Amen. So I just thank you for, for giving me that word right now. Just, it's confirming some things in my life right now. And I have to really just turn it over to him and say, all right, Lord, I, I can't look at what happened. I have to look forward. I just have to keep continuing to trust you. I know you're going to lead me through it. Amen. Amen. To God be the glory. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah, I think I remember God showing me pastor uh, a long time ago. <laughs> so, but outside of that, walk in what he tells you to, because life is too short and limited to not honor God's voice and watch what he does. He's going to open up, overflow on you. Pastor James, y'all, he's going to open up rivers of water through you and, and you just got to move and you're going to just be surprised and awe and it's going to take you a little higher in him than ever before. Amen. So praise the Lord. Amen. 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 Pastor Hall, did you want to say something? Yeah, I just want to give um, the topic again because we had people thank each and everyone that um, came in. The, the topic was destroying the fear in your life. And basically I was talking about a testimony or a statement, something that happened that it God reminded me over 20 years ago uh, about the call to ministry he had on my life in 1999 in Anniston, Alabama, um, where I was at, a, at the ministry and the man of God said that God has showed him there's some people here that, that, is called for ministry and we need you to come forth and because of fear um i didn't come forward even though god gave me the unction i felt the fire like never before and i started thinking of the negative things of my past issues and my past struggles that took me away from coming forth and accepting the call over almost over 20 years ago it was just uh, wow, how God um, brought that back for me to share with the people. And then also it showed that it took me almost 20 years to battle fear, to finally to come it and overcome it by trusting God more. So I was kind of making this as my declaration, my statement that I would not let fear no longer destroy my life because Fear was one of the things that helped me back from coming on social media or like Zoom or Facebook Live because I'm just an introvert. I don't like to talk or be in front of people. I'm okay being in the background, cooling in my quiet place, uh, solitary <laughs> confinement, if you want to call it, but I'm cool there. But, you know, this is the time in the season that God is calling us forward. You know, I was one of the ones, you know, you talk about David hiding in the cave, you know, come out the cave and it's my season to come out the cave. So in order for me to come out the cave, I had to destroy the fear in my life. So this was more of a decoration. That's why I said this at the beginning that this message was definitely for me. And it cut me because it was basically for me because I have to destroy where I'm going and where it's God calling me to. I have to destroy the fear that's in my life associated with this. And one of the key scriptures I was using, Psalms 27 and 1, um, not going to read it again. I just wanted to give some context to people that, that didn't come in at the time, at the beginning. So if they call upon, they have some kind of, you know, context what's going on. And then one of the big things that God had me to do was talk about the Red Sea moment. You probably heard my wife um, expound on that. And it was just basically telling us, you know, Exodus 14, if you got time, you can go back. And it was talking about just everyone had a Red Sea moment, you know, and then just saying that, you know, your Red Sea moment is for you to see God hand perform over your life <clears throat> for God to get the glory. So a lot of times we were running to the Red Sea moment where, you know, children of Israel, they was going forward towards the Red Sea, but they saw the Red Sea, but they didn't know how they was going to cross. They didn't know what the next step, they didn't know what was going to do. It was like they was at a standstill. And then they was wondering, how are we going to get through this? We are stuck. And 
But just remember, your Red Sea moment is for you to see God's hand perform over your life and for God to get the glory, you know, because at the time he actually he actually um, hardened up Pharaoh's heart so he could chase and pursue um, the people. So he <laughs> delayed the people for going across the river a lot sooner so he can get the glory. And then another um, point I was talking about, when you even in your Red Sea, um, your Red Sea moment, don't be afraid and just stand still and watch the Lord rescue you today. Don't panic in your Red Sea moment. Don't allow fear to make you become disobedient to God. Just stand still and allow God to move and rescue you today. And another point was, you know, during that process, Moses had to follow the instructions of the Lord. And that's basically when he told him, pick up his staff and rod and put it over the sea and the sea open, you know, and the Israelites were able to walk through the middle of the sea on dry ground. You know, that's a miracle within itself. So when you're following instructions of the Lord, you have to understand the instructions of the Lord. You got to be in position to hear the voice of the Lord. I used, uh, um, I think, uh, more of the word concerning to uh, Elijah, where he was in the cave and he had the fire and the whirlwind, but it was a still small voice that he recognized God's voice and he came to, you know, discuss with him. So you got to make sure. You but and then also when you get instructions for the Lord, you got to believe and have faith in the instructions of the Lord so you can see the manifestation can happen. You know, you got to believe it to see the manifestation happen in your life. Another couple more points, and then I'll turn it back over to my lovely wife. Is when they were seeing that waiting period before they crossed the Red Sea, that God, even in the midst of attack, God positioned himself to protect his people. And then I used a like like a wraparound shield. This is something um, a term that is used in the Passion Translation Bible, where it talks about um, like for example, I will read this scripture, Psalms one forty four and verse two. He's my shelter of love and my fortress of faith, who wraps himself around me as a secure shield. So basically, it's it about protection. When he's wrapping around you, he is protecting you on all sides, keeping you from the enemy, sustaining you from the enemy. You know, that's when you have to cast your cares upon the Lord and he sustain you. This is the time when you're seeing right there, you're waiting, being still and waiting for God to move on your behalf. He's going to wrap himself around. You just got to cast your cares upon him so he can sustain you. And then finally, what um, verse 27 it was talking about as God um, illuminated and showed and opened the eyes of his people, you will be able to see God destroy your enemies right mm -hmm. in front of you in your Red Sea moment. When you get to the other side and your enemy is still trying to approach and still trying to catch you, God will close the, um, the sea up like he closed the Red Sea up. He will close their progress and up in trying to destroy your life. He'll close their progress up where they're trying to um, cause distraction in your life because he because you are his child. So just to remember that God got you, even in your Red Sea moment, trust God enough that when you get to the other side, he is going to defeat your enemy for you. And then the last point, do not let fear stop you from enduring or having complete victory through your Red Sea moment. At this time, that was a quick recap. Now it's on to you, woman of God. You call that quick? You went back and preached again. I said, oh. No, I didn't. <laughs> to God be the glory. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, Tama. So I was I was sitting here while he was doing his recap, his his recap as he called it, quick. Glory to God. Um, I was looking at you, uh, Diane Gardner. God bless you, Mama God. I'm so glad you're here. Um, but I saw your initials. Um DG, but God flipped them. And he flipped them and then he said, God's daughter. I don't know if you're looking to do a women's ministry or a book. I know you are a very powerful intercessor. I don't know. I'm sure you have your own service, but Prayer Life Ministries would love to have you. The oil on your tongue is very powerful, Diane. And so I heard God's daughter. Glory to God. And if you don't want to use it, I'll take it. <laughs> so I'm not sure if it's a woman's ministry or a book or if, it, if anything that resonates with you. Uh, you are a very powerful uh, intercessor. And so uh, God is looking for you to do that by Shikan. Ah, she's completing her second book. But 
Praise the Lord. Now, I don't know the God's daughter. You might want to seek God about it because I just see, it's just like I see you in the realm of the spirit. It's like you've been, you have been drowning. And it's like this hand that reached for you and you calm when the hand, when the hand caught, when you caught the hand, this hand, it's like he pulled you up out of the water and you were standing on the water and you were calm like a peace that surpasses all understanding. And so I'm not sure if you're available to talk right now because I saw that you typed that in. So um, if you're not available to talk, if you are, unmute your mic and let us know uh, what God is speaking to you, or if this prophetic word uh, resonate with you? I'm, I'm gonna unmute my mic, but I'm kind of not available. <laughs> but I am gonna. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Um, first, I'm gonna say you mentioned book, and I am actually in the process of trying to complete my my second book um, by the by the first of February, and I'm gonna say. Um, Yes, I know, and this is something God is, is, is dealing with me with now. I know that I'm not fully walking into the power that he has given me. I know that I'm, 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 I'm in ministry and I'm doing things, but I still know that I'm kind of holding back. Um, and so this, this message on spear tonight was very, it was definitely on time for me um, because I know for myself that I'm, I'm, I'm given but I'm still not unleashing everything that I know he has invested within me. Yeah. 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 The endless, uh, endless um, supernatural opportunities are for you. Yeah. He wants to give you endless. And because you're not totally letting him, it's like you got your foot in the door and that's it. And God said, just let me open up the door over you. And, let me and it's on time. And he is calling me to, and I think one of the things is, and I know this is one of the things I'm not going to say, I think God is raising me up a uh, higher in uh, the area of healing and deliverance ministry. And it's not a very popular place to be, um, particularly when you are around people who um, have not had that exposure or not in that place and God. So he <clears throat> is, that's definitely where I am right now. He is raising me higher and higher in the area of deliverance ministry. And I'm kind of holding back just a little bit. Wow. Well, you know, that's where I'm at. That's that's what I do. I yeah. bust the devil's face open. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, know, I know, I know, I know. I so, know. Yeah, I prophesy over you that you will receive um, an infilling of a new fresh anointing, a new fresh oil, a new fresh go for it. God says, go forth, come forth. Lazarus was dead four days and God, they said, roll back that stone. Jesus said, roll back that stone. So come forth, woman of God, and drop every weight, every weight mm -hmm. that's kept Lazarus bound in those dead, those wraps. I call God, call the wraps to come off of you right now in Jesus name. There's an angel in the room where you are that he's getting ready to pour the oil of the anointing on you from the anointed one in Jesus name. That the angel is wrapping his wings completely around you, that he is filling you up. You're bubbling over in Jesus name and you're going to go forth and you're going to live and not die and you're going to break every chain through the power of Jesus Christ. Christ. Mm -hmm. deliverance and healing is your portion mm -hmm. in the mm -hmm. name of mm -hmm. Jesus mm -hmm. and I declare it to be so yes. as a Thank prophet you. of God in Jesus name you, Jesus. amen amen yes. amen so go forth amen. God's daughter Thank you, Holy Ghost. yes thank you Holy Ghost yes thank you God hallelujah hallelujah thank you, Jesus hallelujah you're gonna be bubbling honey you're gonna be bubbling up you're gonna be bubbling up yes yes thank you Jesus yeah, Thank you God. have a powerful word in your belly. I read your posts and they're just powerful. So I need you to take those posts and I need you to put them on a live video somewhere because people need to hear your voice. I'm holding back on that too. So I'm just going to keep it 100 tonight. <laughs> I'm holding back on that one too. Um, I, and I know it. I know it. I know it. You're not telling me anything I don't know. I'm, I'm holding back on that one too. I am. I, I, I know that I am. 
Amen. Release those dead clothes. Let them let them free. I know. I know. I know. I know. Thank you. Praise the Lord. I love you. Thank you. Love you too. And thank you so much for the word. Thank you. Oh, thank you for coming on, sis. We hope to see you more when you can. When you can. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Amen. Let's go with Pastor Jackie Stamps, who is usually busy, and she honored our room today. <laughs> oh, we got them both. Okay. Hey. Oh, you. There you go. Hey, fam. What's hey, good, everybody. fam? That's How y'all so doing, Prophet Pastor and Pastor? Prophet is hope. How y'all doing? We are awesome. Oh, yeah. wow. No more hey. fear. It's been destroyed. Hey, uh, fear, we're, we're, uh, first of all, we got to rebuke the spirit of fear because fear will keep us uh, from seeing the best that God has for us. Mm -hmm. And then if we're fearful, uh, woman of God, <clears throat> Uh, I don't know who she was before. It'll start setting up other things. It'll just, fear will start to uh, have have branches and it'll start uh, causing us to uh, have the spirit of self-sabotage. We'll, we'll start doing little things uh, to sabotage uh, what God, what we know God has for us, but we're fearful of, of walking in it because we, we feel we might be rejected or we feel we may not succeed in it and we don't want to step out in it and we'll do little things to uh, self-sabotage ourselves and then we mm -hmm. can just say, oh, that was just the devil, but we, so we could blame mm -hmm. it on the devil, but it really was <laughs> him. It was, it was us self-sabotaging ourselves because we're fearful of, of stepping out on something that we don't know if we're going to succeed instead of just trusting God in it and walking in it. So that that's just for, for me personally, but that should should help someone tonight. Yes. Hallelujah. He was saying that Pastor Dexter was sounding, he said, you know he sound like me. I was like, but he was <laughs> talking about the fear and you know, not trying to keep yourself in the background and What's the was it intro, introvert? Right, yeah. I, I was good That's for. It, uh, hey, I could just chill in the background, and if, if everybody else is shining because of something I've done, I, I find that's that's better that way. Hey, <laughs> they, they did it. Impressive. It's good. I did my part. Nobody even has to know. You know, hey, I, I helped out. That's what I'm here for. Amen. <laughs> but one day, um. I remember going around the offering at one old church we, we was at, and God distinctly spoke to me and he said, out of the out of the shadows and into the light. But mm. when he spoke to me, that was giving me a preview of hey, you this is what's going to transpire in your life later. So yeah. Amen. 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 To God be the glory. Amen. Praise Lord. Thank you, guys. Yeah. Amen. Amen. We love you. Yeah. yeah. We try. We were trying to come on tonight because I, I was like, we had a free Sunday, so he's like, yeah, we want to try and catch my um, pastor Destin and Prophet. It's open tonight, and we can. And we looked at the time. It was all oh, crap. We late, so we run through the house trying to get on. <laughs> Y'all right on time. Y'all right name. on time. <laughs> Diane Gardner. Yes, that's who it was. It's actually Smith, but but God, it's Smith. I, I knew I needed that. God, you, yeah, you I thought to, so. You, look, yeah. you're gonna have to stop this self sabotage. You're gonna have to get up and go get it. You you you're delaying God's best for your life, and other people are waiting on you. I know. Thank you so much. Thank See, I can see her smacking. I don't hear. I don't hear. I know. I know. I know. As an in that. What you what you say, probably? <laughs> I said, I see, she gonna start smacking people in a minute. I know. I said, I know. I know no, I know. I'm just being honest. Because no, I'm just kidding. I'm just playing. You I'm guys, you're not saying anything that I that I don't know. I'm just gonna. I'm just gonna. I mean, I'm being 100 because it's it's. I know it's, it has not. It is not because of a lack of gift, a lack of anointing, a lack of power, or any of that. Because I know, I know what God has given me, and I know what's yeah. on the inside of me. 
Um, but it's, it's and honestly, I'm just going to add this very quickly. I'm actually in a church right now that I also know I don't belong in because I know I'm kind of being um, mm-hmm. but- boxed in from really using the gifts that I have. And so that's yeah. another yeah. thing that I'm dealing with right now as well. I told you, Prayer Life Ministries would love to have you. I know the anointing on your life, Diane. I know it. And I, I know Smith is on your page, but God showed me God's daughter. And so I was, I was like, what she got going on? Lord, please let her come on in. Is, is, is <laughs> God stopping God. you or are you stopping you? Oh, I'm she stopping is. me. I'm not going to try to put on God. <laughs> Yeah, she's stopping her. She said it. Yes, she admitted it. I know it. it. I'm, I'm, I'm not gonna put it on him. I, I, I can't I wait it. to. I can't wait to hear the testimony the next time she come on here. I can't wait to see <laughs> the manifestation of the testimony because I hear the word blossom. I hear the word blossom on you, God's daughter. Blossom. You're about to blossom. Tonight is your last night for saying I know what I've done. Because after this is going to be like, let me tell y'all what God has done because I sat there and let him have his way. Amen. We break the spirit of fear off of you now in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Well, I'm, just, I'm, not recruiting. I'm just saying, she's so powerful, man. I love Diane. I love her. Jesus. Okay, so we're gonna move on. <laughs> Thank y'all so much for the word. Thank you for sharing that with uh, hey, Sister Diane. Wait a minute, how y'all, how y'all done? Hold on, let's make sure. Oh, y'all done? done? Oh. oh, I missed the prophet is on it. Said like two words word, for then... him, not for herself. <laughs> I did hear that. Yeah, so we want to <laughs> make sure. You, with the hey, you look, you got look, got a whole prophet is sitting next to me. Who oh, me? Quiet. And she ain't right. never that. So. Yeah, out of all the stuff. <laughs> I mean, it, it really wasn't much more to be said because, I mean, the prophetess that's on that line, First Lady, it spoke everything that God had already said for to do concerning Diane, um, concerning um, the man of God, James, because we self-sabotage ourselves. And when God has told us to move and we call, a lot of us, we call, uh, are called to walk into our purpose. And it's, it's the, God gives us clarity. He gives us sight. He, he gives us sight. He gives us hearing. And we hear God clearly. And a lot of times because of fear. And this is what we're talking about tonight. That's why you had to be on here. Because God is calling you from fear. He's calling you from the back. He's calling you to the front. But it's up to us to get out of the lack and to walk into the obedience of the things that God has called you forth to do. So it's nothing that, you know, it's not much more for me to say. God is not called us to be the bastards but he called us to be the ministers to to witness to those so they can come out of the dark into his marvelous light so these are the things that god is going to do because i'm going to say there wasn't much more for me to say because all <laughs> of us have been in that place I, I you know i've been in that place and i and i and i want to see god's people walking into their whole call the fullness and the glory of mm-hmm. god that's on their lights the lights that has to shine and see it, we, we what we're having is we God will turn on the light. We'll turn it off. God will turn on the light. We'll turn it off because we're in fear. But my thing is, why would you turn off the light if you're in fear? I, so I, from what I heard, in the dark is when you, you find the most fear. So if the light is on, leave it on and walk into the marvelous light. Amen. Amen. No well, praise him. Yeah. Amen. Awesome. The light. <laughs> Amen. That's, hey, that's the lamp. Yeah. On our path, is it not? That is. How can you not see without the light? Ooh. Yeah, they say the Bible says, how can you see where the lamp is under the lampstand? <laughs> I, I be I be stomping <laughs> my toe when it's dark. I, I can't see good. And I, I stomp on my toe. I, that's why I was like, Lord, thank you for turning the light on so I, I could finally see who I was and what I was supposed to be doing. Because every time the light got out, I stomped my toe. I tripped over something. I went the wrong direction. I'm just saying. But when we walk into the light, Look, I'm walking into the light of the Lord. So I know he's going to guide me in the right direction. It's in the light where I found out who God was. It's in the light when I found out and I grew up in my I matured in the things of God. Amen. Y'all, we we'll use That's that. All. See, I, went, I was trying to be good and be quiet. You know what I'm saying? trying to be good. They used to rev her <laughs> up. You turned the engine on and told them to go for it. I, I know. <laughs> <laughs> 
She didn't even gas. She didn't even look. Which way she would go? She ah ah. <laughs> God be the glory. Everybody write it down. The GPS system, God's positioning strategy system, if you're taking notes, that's important to know where he's positioning you. If you're going somewhere you don't know, you don't just jump in the car and start driving. You turn that GPS system on. You put that address in. You put that destination that's in there, and God is going to give you the turns and the way you need to go. And that's what uh, a lot of people just want to guess at. Oh, I know where that is. And they get lost and discombobulated and not arrived that, that and the other <laughs> that so to God be the glory um and definitely this scripture is definitely for three of you the um that was uh Isaiah 45 1 to 3 put your name in instead of Cyprus and um and look and read it in the the passion translation so to God be the glory so praise the Lord thank you uh ma'am and sir we're gonna go to um, our sister Tanisha, Minister Tanisha, are you available? I know it takes a second to remove that. She may not be available. If she pops off that mic. Okay, there he is. Hi. Hello, everyone. Greetings and miracle evening to you, ma'am. Uh, how everybody doing? I'm sorry. I am super, super busy. I was tuning in a little bit, um, but I was busy because we, um, we're just moving in our new home, praise God. So we're first time home buyers and we're super excited. And um, I'm doing a lot of moving and working and I'm exhausted. So I was tuning in. I said, I can't miss that. Let me catch the last little bit. So I know I came in a little late, but um, I said, let me tune in and get some of this good word. So um, I'm here, and I thank God for the word again. Thank God for the both of you, Pastor Dexter and Prophetess Hope. We love you both, and we love appreciate you. you guys dearly. Amen. Love you, too. Amen. Go and celebrate that house. Go ahead. Yes. So we'll go now for um, Elizabeth. She was looking at us a little while ago. There she go. Okay. She been waiting. She been eating like a little ant eating her up. Ready to, she ready to be moving around <laughs> like a little mosquito. <laughs> you, it's you up now. <laughs> Pastor Dexter and Prop Lady Prophetess Hope. Hello. Pastor, uh, Jackie Stamps and her husband and everyone in their respective places. I apologize for earlier because I was trying to keep up. That's what I was basically trying to do. So I didn't want to be. I honest. already got him for snapping. You fine. I catch him on the background, so it's all right. I did you miss didn't... my scripture though. I think it was in Isaiah. I was trying to get it, but who to... mine or from him? Yours, both of y'all. Well, mine was Isaiah forty-five one through three. Isaiah forty-five one through three. Okay. Mm-hmm. And then. I didn't get in the TPE TPT. Okay, I think his was forty-two. You can't hear you, babe. You on mute? I sent it to you. Okay, and so the strong of fear in my life, Psalms twenty-seven and one. Hmm, in the TPT version, that was a good one. I like that. And you said um, we focus on the fear more than we focus on God. So I took that. And then you told us to trust in the Lord, but we trust so low. Um, when we um trying to get titles, we so caught up in the titles and, and don't know how much the oil costs, but we so caught up in trying to get something that we really mm -hmm. don't need at the moment. And then you said, when we leap, God will catch us according to Psalms 23 and 4. So according to Exodus 14 and 4, you was telling us about the New, New Living Translation. And it was saying something in the way um, you was talking about the um, Red Sea moment. So um, I've had a few of those myself. So I got to learn how to just remain focused and focus on God's fear instead of man's fear. So that's something I need to work on. Amen. It was very great and I really enjoyed myself. Thank you. 
You're welcome. Yeah, the fear um, for you, Elizabeth, is the fear from just moving forward. You allow too many things, I, I hear the Lord saying, holding you back from where you could be in greatness. If you're not where you're supposed to be, you need to ask God to put you in the place that you're supposed to be in so that you can get fed where you need to get fed. Doesn't even have to be prayer life. It could be anybody, but you need to seek God about it because what you don't want to do is allow distractions to be your culprit for missing what God has for you, for missing your healing, for missing your um your deliverance from missing, you know what I'm saying? And for allowing things to come in and disrupt you. Um, we know that we go through things and it's okay because we suffer for Christ. But when your flesh and, and your spirit take over, you miss out on what God has. You should be blossoming by now. I know that God is stirring up things. There's a lot of things that's in you that God is stirring up. And you really should be blossoming, blossoming by now. But that weed, Instead of you just killing the weed, you cut it off. You cut it off above the roots, and therefore it grows back and it begins to choke you. And so I speak over your life that you will no longer be choked. That God will give you the wisdom to walk in where He needs you to walk in, to walk into the ministry, to seek Him about that ministry that's going to help you grow. Every ministry is not perfect. You're going to have your ups. You're going to have your downs. You're going to have your aggravations. You're going to have even the pastor and the and the um, the pastors. You know, may say some stuff that may not be sit well but at the end of the day you know they mean well because jesus is in them if you're not following a pastor that has jesus in them you will know the works of christ because his fruit tells it so you need to ask god where am i what do i need to be doing right now am i sabotaging myself and i'm seeing things that i that i'm not supposed to be seeing because the enemy don't want me where i'm at and so i just hear the lord just speaking over you to 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 trust him to trust him and obey, obey him. And, and, and if, 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 because I just feel, I see you like, it's like you're sinking low. And the Lord says in the Bible that uh, in your miry clay, I'll pull you out. And so you need to ask God to pull you out. And if where you are are the people that you are around, I don't know, I see a circle of people around you that are like, they got um, javelins and, and, and arrows and rocks and things like that. They want to throw at you. But Jesus and the woman, the adulteress, he stopped those rocks. So you've got to trust God and you've got to say, God, I need you to stop this this, this enemy that's after me, show me me, show me where, if I'm misunderstanding, show me where it is, God. But if I see no fruit in this ministry that is feeding me, whether even when, because, you know, the Bible is sharper, is sharper than a two-edged sword. So you want the Bible to cut you, not the people. I just said something right there. You want the Bible to cut you in your bone marrow, not the people. And so if you're allowing people to stop you from your, your, uh, your knowledge and your breakthroughs and your deliverance and, your, and growing higher in him, then you got the problem. So once you remove yourself and you say, God, show me, and this is what you see, don't complain about it. Just go to whoever it is, tell them you're bothering me. This is why. If they don't understand, then you know it's time to move on. You can't go to your pastor. If you can't go to your, it's time to move on. If you keep on finding yourself in a complaining place, God said, do not murmur, do not complain, but give me glory. Do not be anxious for nothing, but pray about everything. I just hear God just saying these things to you. And so you need to receive these things from the Lord and stop letting people run over you and stop you running over yourself. Because sometimes we run over ourselves, we see things that are not really there because we want to move on. But God said, I need you to see me, see me. If you don't see me in them, then this is not the place for you. But God said also, if they're disturbing you, you walk, you talk to them and you say, this is what's bothering me. Let me have a whole meeting with those who are hurting me. Let me talk to them individually. 
not before the front of the church, not before other people, but privately. And if they don't get it, then you move on to the whoever it is. You get them all. If they don't get it, then you call them all together. Say, hey, this is what's going on. Or God may say, it's time to move forward. It's time to move on because you're not growing. And God doesn't want you complaining. And so these weeds and these javelins, you've got to pull the weeds from the roots so they don't choke you. In Jesus' name, amen. Glory to God. And your last name, Wilson, I'm sorry. What will you do for my son? What will you do for my son? And there's sacrifices to be had. There's sacrifices you have to make. And there's a healing sheet of healing oil coming over you now. Healing in your spirit, healing in your body. You're supposed to have been dead a long time ago. You're not even supposed to be here. But God has a plan and purpose for you. Ask him what that is. So you don't keep walking down the path of darkness with no oil in your lamp. Jesus. Because you get in the middle of the road in the dark place and your oil runs out, you're in trouble. So God said, get ready, get prepared. What will you do for my son? In Jesus' name, praise the Lord. All right. Um, Prophetess. Yes. Um, I never told D, Pastor Dexter this, but I didn't want to spiritually die at mm-hmm. that church. I told God that. And this is Lady Keep Harassing Me, but do you know about the Lady Keep Harassing Me? But well, she called today and um, I kind of rushed off the phone because you know, I didn't want to be bothered. With it because I actually seen several times and I seen myself getting kicked out the ministry. I literally saw that in a vision today. And so, you know, um, but I did tell God that I didn't want to spiritually die because I felt like I was spiritually dying at the ministry, but I never told D that. So I sat there and suffered in silence and didn't say anything. And so uh, when he told me to pray about it, I said, okay. You know, and he probably was like, why she said okay like that? Cause it was like, I just tried to like brush him off. But deep down inside, I was very hurt and very disgusted because I felt like I was spiritually dying. Like I wasn't gonna make it or something. And I could see myself spiritually dying and physically dying at this ministry. And I was telling Tony that I didn't really wanna go back there because it just didn't feel like it usually would feel. But I, I continue to go because I want more of Jesus and less of me. Mm. Um, but you were in the vein of God and you were in my deep thoughts. And when prophets parents say, oh, they don't know what you battle with at night and stuff like that, he was on target because that's what I've been battling with, mm. dying spiritually. So that's what well, else. Time to rise up, sis. Time to move forward. Praise the Lord. Thank you for that. Glory to God. So we're going to go with Jacqueline Bailey. Woman of God, are you there? Yes, I'm here. (laughs) Um, I've been a little in and out. Honestly, I've been trying to do like a couple things at one time, but um. From just listening to um, Pastor Dexter do the recap, um, I noticed we have quite a bit in common because I am an introvert and <laughs> I don't um, like talking in front of people either. And um, when God gave me, you know, the call that He had for me, I was a little iffy about it. Probably so, you know that I was like, mm mm you know yeah no I don't think so you know and I was very fearful of it and then other things that um we've discussed that you know I was fearful of so I can't say that 
has played a big role in my life period because I've never been one that have stood out. I've always been in the background, you know? So for um, me to have this calling and to kind of get pushed forward, it was it was scary for me. Still is in a way, I'm just being honest, still is you know, um, but I thank God that I have you all in my life because, you know, you all give me that push at the same time, Amen. you know, um, but even with these last few days, um, with some things that has happened, um, it's been, it's been a bit challenging because, you know, I was asking God, you know, where, where are you taking me or in this, in these areas? Because I felt like I was just like in a place, a, a stopping place, like, okay, no, I don't want to go there to these, you know, but um, he was like, I'm equipping you for the positions that I have for you, you know? Mm-hmm. So, and I was like, okay, God, but you know, these are places that are uncomfortable for me, but I'm, I'm also learning that sometimes we have to get put in those uncomfortable places. And, um, and you know, so I'm still trying to get past some fearful areas in my life, honestly, because it is it's something that it's, I know that has to happen, but, and I know it's a process and I often, you know, sometimes try to rush the process, you know, and God is just kind of tells me, okay, I need you to slow down, mm-hmm. you know, but um, I know I want to get past those areas where I am afraid to um, even just speak out. You know, he, he has been working on me in those, in that area, because there were times when I wouldn't, when he would tell me something, even to give to someone else, I wouldn't say a word. You know, so he is um, working on me there, but I want him to work on me in all areas. I don't want to be so afraid to even when it gets to a place where I have to literally stand up in front of people and just freeze. I don't want to get, you know, be there because if he has a word for me to give to others, I want to be able to do that without fear. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, that's... (laughs) So I, I'm, um, the word was awesome tonight and it, it really hit home for me. And um, mm. that's all I have. Amen. So I didn't know this woman, a guy, uh, Jacqueline, she is my armor bearer. Um, and she's a powerful woman of God. But um, Jacqueline, I'm looking at your last name, Bailey. And, and I see bail, bail. God said, I paid your bail. I paid your bail. Will you be putting yourself in, in prison? I paid your bail. He also said, stop bailing and face me of who I am. And we stop being fearful. Stop speaking it over your life and begin to speak. I have no fear. Begin to speak a perfect love, cast out all of my fear. Begin that speak peace of understanding, peace that surpasses understanding over your life uh, in Jesus' name. Uh, so you can break out of this. I hear the fear in your voice, uh, but you just got to say, okay, God, I'm stepping on this. When the people in the circus, they get on the tight rope. I'm sure they have fear, but they also are powerful enough to feel they're not going to fall off. They see that net under that rope and God is your net, but he's not going to let you fall. He's not going to let you break anything. Not one bone will be broken because God is who he is. It might not feel right when you walk out on faith, when you walk out um, and bust through the fear of man. And bust through the fear of yourself. It, it ain't gonna always feel right. When the circus man walked through the fire, he walks through that fire and yet he still doesn't burn. The three Hebrew boys, uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they, was, they did not bow before the God 
they said, we still have our God, the God. And if we die, we're not, it's not going to change. It will just be with him. And so you need to be Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, and Jacqueline. And you need to walk in that fire and know that there's going to be another one that's going to let you come out not singed, not burned. We come out singed and burned because we depend on ourselves to bring our victory. And we've seen people um, have so much victory. We've seen people who are millionaires. We've seen people who have made themselves to the top. We see the people in the world have less fear than we do. But their fear is on, their um, success is temporary because their, their, their faith didn't come from God. It came from themselves. And so we're going to suffer for Christ. We're going to have to go through it for Christ. Watch this. And the people who were making the fire hotter, when they were pushing them in, they were dying. So God has not left you. He never leave you, nor will he forsake you. And I speak that over all of you in Jesus' name. So I thank you, God, for everyone that's been on here. Is there something that you need to say, sir, before I continue on? Amen, amen. Um, you know, basically, as I, I stated at the beginning, this mostly destroying the fear in your life was basically ministering to myself first and foremost, because this is the day that I want another day I will allow fear to be over my life will be another day that I will allow fear to lead my life. And one of the things how I got to this point, I had to get to it when I had a deeper submission into God. The deeper, you know, one of my favorite quotes is, the more <clears throat> yield to God, the more he reveal to you. So the more if you deeper submission into him, the more the layers that that are restricting or cause distraction burn off. So we just got to remember, if you're having issues, we're having situations in our life, go deeper. Get deeper into him. Go into mm -hmm. his presence like never before mm -hmm. because he is the way maker and the miracle worker. Mm -hmm. You know, Some of these songs that we listen to are very key and very prophetic, you know. Mm -hmm. He's the light in the darkness. That's what that's what he that's what he that's who you are, you know, right? So you know he's a good father, you know. So we just got to remember, go deeper. That's what I had to get to the point where I know, God, I'm not where I feel I need to be with you. I'm struggling with fear. I'm um in this case, this topic is about fear. I need to go deeper. Let's go deeper. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. don't go deep just out of your um your you gotta go deeper beyond your capabilities because a lot of times we get to a place and we stop yeah because yeah. we say this is far we thank god no god wants us to go more deeper greater expectations deeper <laughs> deeper until we lose ourselves mm -hmm. and we go deeper in him yeah that's um so that's where i'm at you know when you go in a deeper realm that's when you you, you get into that glory place you know mm -hmm. and so if we're, if we're struggling with anything just go deeper in god go deeper push yourself you can go deeper you he would never put more on you can bear you can go deeper you just got to surrender the battle is you yourself like the man of god talk about self-sabotage you are stopping you for getting deeper in God mm -hmm. by being short by not pushing the process, not immersing yourself in God. You know, we got to get to the point where we okay with the surface or the part-time relationship with God, where we need to go full-time, where it's deeper where it takes, yes, does it, does, does it uh, create more work? Yes, but it's more rewarding too. Mm -hmm. It's more beneficial yeah. too. You'll be more stronger and wiser too. Just got to be willing to pull in the work. So I just pray each and every one, just go deeper. Yeah. If you're dealing with things, go deeper. You know, uh, don't settle. 
Go deeper. Mm. Allow God to work it out for you. Allow God to do the work for you. Cast your cares upon them and he will sustain you. Mm. Cast, you got to throw it in a um, specific direction. So throw it to Jesus and allow him to sustain you. This is back to you, woman of God. Mm-hmm. So, <laughs> you know, I got crazy faith. I'm crazy, y'all. <laughs> I'm crazy. I'm, I'm crazy. I believe God. I do. Um, and I'm so grateful to him. Because there's times where he, he will knock you down a little bit, but you got to dust yourself off and get back up and keep moving. Um, we can make our plans, but the Lord determines our steps. So make your plans and ask God for strategies. That's how you get through the fear. Peter asked, can I get out on the water? He didn't just jump out there because he probably would have sunk. Because <laughs> the Lord said, wait a minute, you didn't ask me if I, you could come. But fear caused him to almost drown. But guess what, y'all? The power and love of our Savior kept him from drowning. So that's the thing you got to believe, that even though he was sinking, God didn't let him sink. He didn't let him die. He, didn't, he did not die that day. So we give God glory. And so I'm going to go ahead and I thank all of you for being on here. Um, I thank the um, stamps, um, pastor and prophetess for coming on today. I thank you for Pastor James Shaw. God is going to show you his face. I thank you for um, Elizabeth. God said, will you do it for my son? God is, is doing new things. Now it's time to move forward. I thank you for Jacqueline Bailey, who God has bailed you out like Paul and Silas, who went through, didn't care what the lady was saying. He, they said, shut her up. And they kept going. The jail swung open. And they said, we're right here because they still believe God. And thank you for Tanisha and her new home that God is getting ready to do something new in your new home. He's getting ready to give you new things new mindset a new um a new wife point of view i want you to look out for god to start showing you new things um minister tanisha as a wife as a wife you think you might be doing good but you can always do better i know that i can tell you that i'm always like god what can i do better as a wife and god is getting ready to show you some new things tanisha you just listen don't say they don't agree with you. You just trust God. Begin to write them down. He's going to minister to your heart and to your spirit as a wife. You're going to be more um, connected to your husband in a way that is just going to be such a servant's heart. It's just going to take you there. And it's going to increase in your marriage. Your marriage is going to be powerful. You didn't just get a new home just because God felt like it, but he gave you a new home because he wanted to give you new things. He wanted to show you what he can do in your life that's greater, that's better. And he's about to do that over your life. So I thank you guys for coming on Prayer Life Ministries, conversation with the pastors. We're on here unless Unless otherwise um, things happen uh, every Sunday at 6 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Thursday, the blood still works at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. You saw me missing uh, sometimes. That's because we've been in consecration, convocation. Uh, we've been doing, God is moving some things in my life. Um, we just lost um, a close friend of the family, uh, my former pastor. And so um, I'm not sure when the funeral is. So uh, bear with me, it's, it's very hurtful because we love the man of God. And that's the powerful thing is that he was um, a minister, a, a wise man of the Lord. Also, um, as you see, he has posted, if you're anywhere in the Atlanta area, uh, March the 3rd and the 4th, I will be, um, we'll be in prophetic uh, conference, uh, Grace and Faith Dominion Impartation Conference. We're looking forward to deliverance, looking for miracle signs and wonders. I'm looking for the cloud of glory to come over, who our host is Pastor um, Prophet Samuel Nathan uh, Hudson Jr., a very good and powerful man of the Lord. So if you're in the Atlanta area, uh, that would be, I think, East Point. It's up there. I can barely see on uh, Washington 
Road in East Point. Um, we're gonna put the, I'm gonna put this this up on my page, and it'll be on our Prayer Life Ministry page. The conference is free. You just show up. Amen. To God be the glory. And then if you need a deliverance to go for that, you know, anybody that needs deliverance, they're carrying some demons. They just can't shake no matter how much they go to church, no matter how much they pray. Uh, here I am, your deliverance minister. I will punch that devil in the face. I am not afraid of him. He knows my name and I'm ready to go forth on your behalf. Hallelujah, glory to God. We also have my uh, part of my deliverance team, which is uh, um, our uh, my armor bearer, Jacqueline Bailey, who we work together unless it is an emergency. You ain't got to worry about setting up nothing. We'll, we'll catch with you, but setting up is better. Glory to God. Um, I think that, oh, Saturation Saturdays. Right now, we've decided to do it once a month at 9.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, the list God leads us to just to hop on and begin to pray. Uh, we want to do more praying because we are prayer life. Uh, ministries international and i'm looking for god to do greater i thank you all every guest i pray that you're no longer going to be a guest that you're going to be family when you come on here those who want to join the ministry uh if you go on our prayer life ministries uh international page uh um, in Facebook, you can fill out a form that uh, says you want to be a part of the ministry. We welcome you with open arms. If you want to give your life to Christ tonight and you don't know who it is, <coughs> whether you're watching live or the replay, please come to us because we need you to get with Christ. We don't want you to get left behind when he returns in Jesus name. And so I thank you for listening to the word of God through my husband, my uh, apostolic covering, Apos uh, Apostle Dexter, Pastor Hall in Jesus name. Uh, <laughs> you're gonna beat me up and myself lady prophetess hope hall um we we love y'all with the love of christ and we want to uh give honor to our covering uh apostle antoine braggs hallelujah and uh lady sherry braggs powerful uh, man and woman of God. If you look at our page, you'll see the pictures of us as we were bowing down before the Lord as the man of God impartation, did impartation on our lives uh, as we did the convocation. Um, he, um, uh, we did a, um, I said a confirmation. I can't think of a confirmation with him that he confirms that he trusts us in the in the win that when we have, we say we have covering, we can call on him. We trust him. So God bless you all. We're going to pray out um in jesus name i i want to see if the woman of god i know they put it on dark but i want to see if the woman of god pastor uh prophetess jackie stamps is available to just pray us out of here i bet she said she's calling you come on <laughs> <laughs> hurry up <laughs> was i right Yeah, they're gonna pay. She already knows. She, <laughs> does your body work be dropping down? Amen. To God be the glory. Glory. Look, yeah, yeah, you did. But yeah. I love you though. But I love y'all though. Yeah. You know who you're talking to. This ain't just any old kind of prophet. I'll be sitting in your living room drinking your tea. I'm, I'm like, yeah. <laughs> 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 to God be the glory. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. So we thank you so much on today, God, for the presence that you have given on today. Father, I pray continually for Prayer Life Ministries International. Father, continue to cover um, Pastor Dexter and Prophetess Lady Hall, Father God, that they go forth and do your will. Father, I thank you right now for the word that has gone forth on today. Father, continue to allow it to marinate on the hearts of the men and women of God on today. Father, I thank you right now as they go forth, Lord God, on their daily walk, God. Continue to strengthen them, Father God, as they go forth to spread the gospel that you have called them to do, Lord. I thank you, Father, for all of us being able to connect on tonight. I thank you for this powerful word, this prophetic move of God on tonight in the name of Jesus. Father, we give you glory and we give you all the honor and the praise in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Amen. They're part of total amen. life. They sound like ours. Total life. Total life. life. <laughs>
Christian yeah. Ministries. Christian Ministries. In Anniston, Alabama. Alabama. Whoa. Yeah. <laughs> she moving on up, y'all. So y'all look for her on Facebook pages everywhere. She probably she's probably sneaking on your page somewhere. Uh, Just tap on her. She's a trustworthy great woman TV for God. Who's doing it? TV, uh, right? Super shows. One day I'm gonna grow up and be like her. One day. Ooh, I don't. Do anyway, that. in Jesus' name, thou shalt not tell a lie. <laughs> so y'all have a blessed and powerful y'all night too. until sun, and unless the lord comes back and receives us we receive y'all in jesus name god bless hey. you for prayer life ministries international amen love, y'all. love amen. you amen. Good night. Bye, y'all be blessed Later, friend, you y'all. Too.